And so, uh, good afternoon, everyone, if you're on the East Coast, uh, good morning if you're on the West Coast, and good lunchtime if you're somewhere in between. Uh, my name's Peter Goodwin, and welcome to this uh, webinar of the committee to review long-term operations of the Central Valley Project and the State Water Project. Uh, in the interest of time, I'm not going to introduce the full committee, uh, and I would just direct you to the National Academy's webpage if you wish to know more about our charge, what we're doing, and who's contributing. But I would like to highlight uh, Dr. Laura Ehlers, who's with us. She's the senior staff scientist for the National Academies, uh, accompanied by Dr. Sabina Vaidnes and uh, Maya Freer from the National Academies. We also have from Reclamation, uh, Dr. Dave Mooney will be joining us, Dr. Josh Israel, Lillian McCormick. Uh, many of you know Dr. Mooney was both the sponsor and initiator of this effort. We would also like to acknowledge and thank the Delta Science Program for making today possible. And the purpose of this webinar is to hear from the lead author of the recent peer review of the fish and aquatic effects analysis for the long-term operations. And before I introduce the speaker, uh, firstly, I'd like to uh, highlight that this webinar is being recorded. Uh, so if you don't wish to be recorded or show your presence, uh, please drop off. And what we're going to do on the format of this is we're going to allow Dr. Rose to go through his presentation. And then we're going to open for the committee members, uh, members of the science program and reclamation in case they also have questions of Dr. Rose. And I would ask the committee to use the raise hand feature and we'll try and get to as many of the questions as possible. If we have time at the end, we'll take questions from other participants and we would ask you to put those questions into the chat. So with that, uh, it's a great pleasure to introduce Dr. Kenny Rose, who's very well known to many of us. Uh, currently, Dr. Rose is the Franz Merrick Professor in Sustainable Ecosystem Restoration at the University of Maryland Center for Environmental Science. And in that role, Kenny does everything you would expect from an Adele professor. He's a early career faculty mentor. Uh, he's a great mentor for graduate students. And perhaps most importantly, he's leading several institution-wide research initiatives. Prior to joining UMSIS, he was professor and associate dean at Louisiana State University. And prior to that, when many of us got, really got to know Kenny for his research, he was at the Oak Ridge National Laboratory. He serves on numerous steering and advisory committees at the federal level and for international programs, including the Chesapeake Bay Program. And currently he serves on the Independent Science Board for the Delta Stewardship Council and the Delta Science Program. He's received numerous awards for his research excellence, including the 2020 Oscar Seti Award from the American Fisheries Society. So Kenny, we know you're a busy guy. And so thank you for spending the time to talk to the committee today. And I'll pass the mic over to you. Thanks, Peter. Um... So uh, welcome everyone, thanks for joining this. Um, uh, as you know, a, a review of a draft effects analysis is not the most exciting stuff to talk about. So I will try to uh, keep it interesting by as best I can relating what our panel found to what the committee is, is looking at. Um, so so why, why even do this presentation? Well, you know, there's, Quite a bit of overlap between the National Academy's charge and questions and immediate tasks and what the review panel and in fact a lot of the issues and models that are used uh, likely will overlap quite a bit between the panel review and as the National Academy committee goes forward. What did the panel do? We reviewed uh, a draft version of the effects analysis and that's important because that uh, our focus was on methods, not uh, of long-term potential changes in long-term operations of the two facilities. Uh, you'll see there's some things we did not look at that I expect the committee 
uh, is hoping we had looked at or they will look at and we'll have a list of that later. What this enabled us to do that perhaps uh, a committee faced with a broader scope uh, has trouble with, we took a deep dive into the models and the analyses and individually went through each model, the 27 that we were given. Uh, and so it's a little different kind of review that way um, than the 10,000 foot view, which it has, but it's based on those models. And we're hoping uh, that, that the strengths uh, that we identified and some of the important issues that we think should be looked at some more uh, will be useful to the National Academy Committee as they go forward. So uh, again, uh, this audience is a bit of a mystery to me. I think it's probably pretty broad, but, but why is there even a review panel of reviewing something? So uh, there's a reinitiation of the Endangered Species Act, um, and it's about the long-term operations, LTO, of both of the pumping facilities. Uh, and the idea is that the anticipated modifications uh, will have impacts to the ESA listed species and their critical habitats. And so this goes through a process, an ESA process that I won't go into, but this is part of that process from the Bureau of Reclamation where they, uh, and the draft is an important word, they have an effects analysis that is for the environmental impact statement. And it also in parallel informs a biological assessment which feeds into hopefully uh, the biological opinion about these actions. What exactly is the draft effects analysis and, and how did we get a, a panel together? Well, the request came from reclamation to the Delta Science Program and uh, the timing was, was excellent for it because many of the analyses were mostly done, but it wasn't completely done yet. So there was, plenty there for a thorough review. And then with some caveats, because some of the partial analyses were, were okay, we could, we could figure out what's going on. The missing ones were a little more challenging, but that timing is important because in, in theory and in hopeful that there's time for STEM, the Bureau in reclamation to look at what we said uh, and see if there's things they would wanna do uh, somewhat differently. Uh, you know, other reviews get a final product and pretty much you're reviewing what's there and there's not a chance for any sort of follow-up. And so this timing was good. I will say getting a draft, uh, both I suspect made reclamation feel vulnerable because it's a draft, uh, but also is a bit challenging to the reviewers because they, uh, it's not complete, right? Uh, but, but we felt this was excellent timing for a review point of view. And again, we're focused on methods, not the results. So we're not judging if the predicted results are large or small. We're, uh, we're evaluating how did they come up with whatever the impact size was. So it's a methods review and that's important. And because the analyses were overlapped to so much between informing the EIS and informing the biological assessment, very few cases did we need to distinguish our comments between the two. They applied to both. So uh, here's the review panel. Uh, uh, and I, I think several are probably listening, I hope, uh, but I won't, we won't call on them. Uh, I didn't sign up for that. Uh, but you can see who they are. And of course a picture helps. And importantly, uh, Yetta Jager was the chair of the panel. I was the lead writer. Although the way we worked together, we both kind of co-chaired and we both kind of co-wrote. Uh, and here are the other members. Uh, you can tell there was one real field biologist in there and that's the bottom picture, uh, Emily. Uh, you can tell kind of by the pictures. Um, and so there was five of us reviewing this. What is the draft effects analysis? Well, there are three kinds of documents, background documents, which were obviously very important. The review documents themselves, which were chapters for the biological assessment, one for each species. 
Uh, and then there's a whole bunch of appendices and attachments for the environmental impact statement. And then there's supplemental. And it was a total of about 6,880 pages. And we're a five person panel. So that requires some strategy and planning on how to tackle this. That's our report. Uh, and looks very nice in the cover and everything. Uh, this was our initial meeting with the Bureau. And all I'm showing you here is these were the models that they either have used, included means they included it for our review. You'll see in another slide, there's some no's in there because they weren't ready yet. Uh, but you know, this is just to give you a sense of there, there's, there's HEC 5Q, there's DSM-2, CalSIM is there, life cycle models are on this one. Here's the models or analyses we reviewed for Old and Middle River, and you see a few of the no's come up. Uh, they weren't ready yet, uh, uh, but you could see there's some well-used models that show re up repeatedly in these kind of assessments. This was about spring and actually fall Delta outflow. You can see there's, and we'll talk about some of these, again, giving you just a sense of the scope here. Uh, there's the summer and fall X2, wasn't there. There's the Shasta co-water pool. Um, there's the egg mortality models, et cetera, et cetera. It's quite a list of models and any one of these could be referring to a model that was previously used and therefore uh, doesn't have to be repeated, but we needed to look at how what the model was doing. A lot of yeses on this one. And then this is a schematic and I will not go through this whole thing, but this is the plan for reclamation of how these different models and analyses inform each other and fit together. So what did we not review just to be clear? We didn't review the magnitude of predicted effects or impact. We did not look at the feasibility or the basis of the different alternatives. We accepted those as alternatives and said, are the methods appropriate for comparing those alternatives? Uh, for those who are familiar with ESA, um, we did not look into the formulation of environmental baseline, which may sound it sounds easier than it is. There's a lot that goes into that. And uh, Reclamation made excellent use of, of these conceptual models. We did not review their interpretation of these conceptual models, not the numeric ones, but MAST, for example, uh, and, this, and this, the salmon ones and the pretty much salmon and delta smell. So we accepted their interpretation of what are possible effects from that and didn't judge that. Then we looked to see, did the methods address those effects, right? Some caveats, this is also important. Uh, I'm not representing the Ind Independent Science Board uh, here. This was done before I joined the board. And then, uh, so this was uh, prior. I am, I am trying to represent the collective views as the panel as presented in the report. And it's a caveat because uh, it's a fairly long report. It's 6,000 pages we reviewed on and off. Uh, hopefully I got our collective views uh, accurate. Um, I will say that um, some of the details and nuances that are in the written report, I just can't cover in 50 minutes. Uh, and so uh, if something sounds interesting or something sounds concerning, uh, please go look in the report. It may address some of those uh, when you read the full document. And then the final Q&A, uh, I, I can't help it, may include some of my own opinions, and therefore that doesn't represent the panel. Uh, um, it represents uh, the panel plus me. What was the process we used just to get an idea of this? Uh, in the usual way we do this, the Delta Science Program does this a lot and well a kickoff meeting with the program and the Bureau. And in many meetings, the panel would meet. Um, uh, and I have a couple of things on the side there to remind me. For people who are not familiar with these panels, you walk in and there's 6,000 pages. And so you have to keep everyone calm. 
And you no, know, you don't have to detail read all 6,000 pages. We, we have a strategy for this. Uh, everything is under control. Uh, we know how to do this. And it turned out uh, there was, you know, five people who just made an excellent team. And that's what enabled us to get done the way it was done. Uh, so each model is was pretty much reviewed by two panelists, but there were certain models that one of our panelists uh, was an expert at. And so that's why I have one to two. A whole bunch of discussions among the five of us uh, and, and uh, uh, from the Delta Science Program, I think Aaron had to listen to all of them. Uh, and we had talked about answering our charge questions, uh, overarching comments, uh, species comments for the biological assessment. And then, uh, and that was led by Yetta as the chair. Um, and then my job was to capture those discussions. You'll see we have written reviews of each of 27 models that we were asked to review. That and the discussions, to, and I developed a draft, again, with Yetta, um, uh, that everyone reviewed, iterated, and iterated. I don't know, can you iterate more than iterate? Um, and edited, and then we all unanimously approved that final report. So that was the process for this. Here was our overall charge for the review. The intent of the review is to evaluate the analytical approach to assess how the long-term operations affect exposure, response, and risk of ESA listed species, both individual level and population level. The review will also assess whether the quantitative and qualitative methods and risk assessment tools were, are or were used appropriately. We had five charge questions, and I won't spend a lot of time on these because these are fairly focused on their alternatives and the effects analysis of their, their alternatives. But uh, there are some general things that come out, and it's always good to see the charge questions. What's in red? were terms that we went as a group and made operational definitions of. For those who work with these charge questions, sometimes they begin to get mushed together and you have trouble distinguishing which an answer goes to one or three. So we made operationally, what are they asking in us of these questions and how do the questions differ? And that's the red part. So to what extent do the draft analyses explain this exposure uh, response and risk. Uh, not necessarily quantify, but explain it. And this is where the conceptual models came in for certainly Delta smelt and salmon. And our general conclusion, and again, it's, you know, when you start to put it on a PowerPoint slide, it makes you a little nervous because there's lots of nuances and caveats, but the major effects from the alternatives that the alternatives could affect were, you know, mentioned somewhere at least, if not quantified. Uh, there were some that were not there, but they weren't all explicitly included, and they're unevenly represented across the species, and that's because the, the data and models are different across them. Uh, we did notice, and this may be of use to the uh, to the almost yeah to the National Academy Committee. Uh, it got a little confusing about conservation measures being part of the effects or the mitigation of the effects. And uh, as you know, 6,000 pages, so uh, it's probably in there or it could be in there, but it, we felt it could be much clearer whether the conservation measures were part of the effects or, or only part of the mitigation or the offsetting. So these are the kind of comments that come in the answer to these charge questions. As best we can, we try to answer them. And then we have some things that we think uh, would add to uh, a stronger answer or even a more in, uh, higher endorsement of it. So what was two? To what extent do the analyses provide, and boy, we love these three words, scientifically defensible approach? Uh, we thought in general that the, this coupled model analysis approach using a common source model that included climate change uh, was a, a solid foundation. That, that's a scientifically defensible approach. Of course, it's always in the details, right? Uh, but that, that was that's a good way to go. Uh, we, uh, and again, it's a draft, always remember that. So 
we felt that they're coming when it goes from draft to final. We're hoping to see more integration of these effects of the different stressors from the alternatives to the population level, because that's the biological assessment level. And a, a theme that's going to come up over and over are the scales. When you have CalSIM-3 with monthly output trying to inform ecological models that may be hourly or daily. And that's going to come up again and again. Question three, best available science. Uh, using existing models is, uh, is also a good strategy. We did caution, though, that a models must be evaluated for each new question they're being asked to answer. And simply that the fact they were peer reviewed, you have to look at what where they were peer reviewed for what questions. And that wasn't as well documented as we uh, as we would have liked. Data gaps and uncertainties. Uh, we thought reasonable methods for data gaps were, for the few exceptions, were reasonable. The uh, we were back to the calcium three interpolation again, uh, from monthly to submonthly example daily. Uncertainties were less developed. Again, it's a draft, but uh, there was no real big picture about the uncertainties, and we thought that would really add to answering that question. And the last question was, was whether the models were adequate for comparing the alternatives. At the conceptual level, it seemed like they were. Summarizing results by water year type was very helpful, we felt. But we noticed some patterns that should be looked at more. Many alternatives all gave the same, very similar small effects. And that always, as a modeler, that always gets your attention. Are you missing something among these alternatives that you're that would make them differ more? Is there a common driver that's just driving the results and converge makes them converge more than they normally would have? Uh, climate change, for example. Okay, pause. Uh, since Peter said the questions will be at the end, I'll keep going. So then we get into that. That was one part of our report: answering those five charged questions. And we're going, we're kind of peeling the onion. So first we started with the broadest view. Now we're gonna go into global and overarching comments. And then the last part is the building blocks of all of this. And that's the reviews of the individual models. So why do we call them global? Because we wanted them to be super important overarching comments. That was the only reason. One, and this, this should not be lost in a review, especially ours, uh, Reclamation has done an impressive effort to date. Many data sets were put together. I know from my own experience, coupling of these models is easy when you draw it on a PowerPoint slide and you draw an arrow between two boxes. In practice and in operation, it's, it is not that easy to do. Uh, and so they, they really did an excellent job with, with those aspects of it. They also had a very solid conceptual basis both the coupled models and the life histories and what stressors are important at different life stages uh, was, was well done. And the modeling uh, was uh, an incredible effort and we, we shouldn't lose sight of that. But you know, with reviews, now we say, however, uh, a second global comment is, is uh, the, the part of integration is always a challenge in these large assessment analyses and it just has to be overcome. So they organized results by species uh, um, and they, they had a nice method for trying to go over effects. Um, in the version we got, it wasn't, didn't go far enough. It may be going farther now, but the version we got, it did not. And you know, and committee members know, cumulative effects is always an issue, right? Um, and so we had comments about that. And then the third general comment was that uh, Reclamation very clearly stated that, that they, because CalSIM-3 is monthly, they are going to report and, and look at results monthly. And we disagreed with that philosophy uh, and went into reasons why. Uh, and the bottom line is that there are ways, without redoing everything, that you can add daily variability 
to uh, some of these analyses uh, that we think is worth uh, looking at. So then we continue the numbering. That was one, two, three. This is four through six. Uh, these I'm going to be quite brief on. These are our overarching comments. So they're not quite as important as global, but they're very, they, they occurred in more than one model. So they became overarching. And for every one of these, there's two to three paragraphs in the review that give it some, uh, you know, richness, uh, examples of what we mean, uh, uh, why it's important uh, and possible solutions. So that's what the review then uh, was doing. Uh, I can't do all that here, but just maybe seeing what we thought were things for them to think about would be uh, helpful to the committee. So one would be, uh, and you know, this is almost becoming a, a, a standard, more presentation of uncertainty. Okay. Uh, another one, clarify and standardize the baseline when you compare to alternatives. Part of this confusion was BA versus EIS, but also uh, these baselines are very complicated, right? And and it's it, they appear everywhere, the baseline. And it's important that, how is that differ from a no action alternative? How does that, um, and and it's there, but it's it was, that's why we said clarify. It's it was it should be easier to find. Uh, it's hard for a reader to to do that unless they're charged with reading the whole thing. Uh, the climate change approach uh, we applaud. Uh, it it was sound. It could always be better, but including it in the predictions of the impacts across alternatives we thought was uh, welcomed. Uh, whenever possible, DSM two and HEC five Q. And I apologize for using. Uh, it didn't take me long to jump into acronyms. Uh, those are uh, hydro hydrodynamic uh, uh, models as well as temperature and salinity. Those are much better to use to get temperature and salinity than directly from calcium. That's what that comment's about. We were concerned about the possibility of, of differences among alternatives being averaged out by the methods being used. We can't tell if that's really happening, but it's worth taking a look at to, to see the, the extent. We thought, we thought that because many alternatives that looked different in terms of, let's say, calcium-3 flow coming out uh, generated very similar effects as they went through these subset of 27 models or analyses. Uh, and then there were a few that were consistently different. And so... That pattern generally uh, means, is there a common driver from this? Is it, it may be correct, but you just make sure that you're not uh, doing something that's kind of converging everything except for a few, right? Um, it may be correct, but, but it's worth looking at. Uh, here's, here's an example of this, you know, the reclamation had to divide this up among many, many, many teams. Uh, it would be good to have protocols for uh, that go across the teams for how to interpret the result. Um, th that part um, we, we thought would be very valuable. So there's consistent format of graphic output, consistent labeling, et cetera. Uh, we thought you could either have that for each team or you make a integration team and, and let them figure it out. One thing we, we did not see, and it's partly because uh, Reclamation is doing an EIS and a biological assessment uh, of the species trade-offs under the alternatives. And there must be, uh, if not, I, then that's even better, but that seemed to be something to look at. Here's this time and space scales in the model. You can subset that as calcium three again. Uh, but there were other issues as well about the scales. Um, I wrote there to remind you that this theme keeps coming up, so it's kind of like rinse and repeat, uh, this comment. W why are, am I, are, was our panel uh, so focused on that? This was not in the review. Very briefly, let me show you what this is. It's a very nice analysis. That those bottom left graphs that show two humps in each of three panels, 
that's the same shift in mean temperature from the dotted line left to the dotted line right. All that's different between them is the variance. So the top one has a nice Gaussian shape. The bottom one's much flatter and broader. And then the bottom one, and uh, I know there's some statisticians out there. I don't know how you characterize that, but it kind of looks not, not normal or something. So the only difference here is, is the variability of the prediction. The mean shifts in the mean are the same, basically 16 to 25 degrees or, or roughly. What that does though, is as you go up now along that left side, it puts it through a very typical uh, bioenergetic performance type curve, relative performance on the y-axis temperature on the left. And this is maybe how growth reacts with temperature with an optimum. Well, when you put it through with enough combinations, look what you get coming out sideways on the right-hand side of that. That would be the performance integrated over all temperatures and individuals. And you get very different performances shifting from one temperature to the next, all because of the variance different. So, you know, we, we, I've talked about this in other places and I finally, uh, and I don't think it was, I was doing a very good job. And then this paper, uh, really illustrated it quite well. So now you've got three different, look at the performance for F, the middle one, right? How much that differs from E, right? So uh, this is why we don't like monthly means or assuming the monthly value applies to every day of the, of the, year, of the month. Variance can, can be very important. Okay, back to the review. Um, some other general comments, and again, each of these, this is why the re review is 100 pages, uh, each of these has two or three paragraphs with examples and things you can do to look at them or assess them or address them. Um, by using existing models, you, you have a tendency to want to use, not change them, because the power is that you use them and it's already been looked at, but that then means you get a bit of a mismatch of what years different models were set up for and calibrated to. So what we mean here is the use of historical data by the models all were assumed present day, although they all didn't, weren't all calibrated and validated against the same set of years. Uh, 13, um, a lot of the, was a, a emphasis on uh, impacts across these alternatives impacts on abundance and population growth rate from the life cycle models. Um, we, were, we were thinking you, you might also perhaps look at sp the spatial structure and diversity, which is all part of the VSP criteria that's used in, in other analyses. So, you know, it's not just numbers and rate of change of, of numbers uh, to, about resilience and about sustainability and all that diversity of life history strategies and spatial structure can be important as well. Uh, it, and it may be that uh, Reclamation looks at that and, and, and says, uh, we, the, we don't need to do that or it's not relevant. Again, we were raising issues rather than um, actually criticizing, but we, in, in a sense, we were saying, how about the, uh, the other stuff? Uh, we're getting there. Uh, the method used to date in the species chapters, that's unique to the BA, it is an interesting approach. And uh, that icon, or what is that, a meme, I guess, is designed to, to remind me to say it was thoughtful. So they took all these models and analyses, and they've got all kinds of effects from different stressors. Some hit the same life stage, some are across multiple life stages. And, and they look at uh, the conceptual models, field data for when these critters are present or not, where they're present in the system to get proportion and frequency of the stressor operating, what proportion are exposed. It's an interesting approach to the cumulative effects. Um, and and uh, we, we encourage more of that. And we had uh, a bunch of comments about this, uh, but it was, it was well laid out. Um, it stopped before it got to the end, but that's okay. Uh, um, uh, well, that's, that was comment 15. The analysis stopped short of providing stressor effects 
uh, all the way to the population, i.e. species level. So, uh, but the ingredients uh, were there with some comments, of course, we had about uh, the categories for proportion and stuff like that. We're getting there. Uh, uh, that one's not important. Uh, uh, the life cycle models were treated somewhat separately from the other models uh, and um, they didn't include all the effects. So this made it a little bit awkward. It, it's fine, but then you have to uh, say when you predict uh, what an alternative would do, uh, maybe you have to caveat that a bit by saying we included these nine effects, but not this one. It, that's where it gets cumbersome, but there's not, it, it's valid, but it's cumbersome, right? And the models were different. And so uh, you can imagine it now across species. Um, and this was a challenge your reclamation faced and um, they didn't shy away. They, they attacked it, but it was, uh, it, it's a documentation uh, challenge. Um, they, it, in the methods, they talk about a weight of evidence approach being used, but it, it wasn't in the draft we had, and we would have liked to see that because weight of evidence sounds uh, intuitively appealing, but it's, it's very important how you implement that and how you deal with not only how much weight you give something, but the uncertainty that goes with it. And so, um, we just, we flagged that as not being present. Um, and now here's an example where they were trying, uh, valiantly trying to do the integration, the stressor effects. And sometimes they would say they were insignificant or discountable. And we weren't judging whether those effects are insignificant or discountable. We were judging the method by which they were determining that, whatever, however it came out, you get the idea. There's other frameworks they can use, that's okay. Some of the studies cited seem outdated. Um, uh, and some were, uh, some, I think some were mine. Um, uh, it, a lot has happened in the Delta in the past five to, to eight years. And uh, I, think, uh, I think it's broader than this analysis. And this is something I think the committee might wanna look at uh, is, is uh, it used to be that if I needed to know something, I'd know who to call uh, and they would be up to date. And that 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 type of system is now uh, ineffective and, and there's new people coming in. So th that's a bigger question about how do you keep up with all this? And, you know, there are uh, uh, the IEP uh, 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 is a great source for some for some of that, but not as much the modeling stuff, for example. Okay, pause, deep breath, we're getting there. These are now the actual models or analyses that we, some of these are statistical, that we reviewed. So this is the yeses that were in that other list from the Bureau of Reclamation, the green yeses. These were now reviewed and each one was reviewed in the context. And by the way, they keep going. There's 27 of them. Each one was reviewed in the context of how it's going to be used in the effects analysis, along with the other models, but to look at these alternatives, because that's how we would answer our charge questions. So I'm, I'm going to give you off just a, I'm not going to do all 27. I'm going to do like three, just to give you a sense of what we were reviewing. And OMR, I know that's one of your big topics, the, the, uh, the committee. So uh, fall habitat is another one. We decided there was so much going on with that, like two other reviews, including I think the Academy Committee and another uh, Delta Science Program uh, panel. Uh, and we we were missing, we didn't have all the pieces. We didn't think adding another one and that, I don't know why I picked that meme. Um, somehow it's supposed to remind me that there are multiple people working on something, I think. Uh, but uh, so we did not review one of the analyses for fall habitat. We did look at Shasta and water temperature quite extensively. I tried to fit that in here because I know that's one of the three you're looking at. I, I couldn't do it. Um, that, that's, a, that's another workshop to look at that, that one. It's an extensive analysis. And quite honestly, it would be unfair to try to put that into four minutes or five minutes. There's a lot there, 
lab data, field data, modeling. So let me illustrate, and this is now the third part, charge questions, global and overarching comments, and uh, and species comments that went with it. Yeah, these were species comments. They were overarching comments about species. And now we're getting to uh, the 27 model ones. So it's kind of peel the onion back. These are the building blocks. So what are some general comments? Calcium three, uh, I, I won't say it again. There are, there, it needs to be looked at. It's probably broader than one simple one, one assessment, but there are ways to add realistic variability to monthly output without going and changing calcium to be daily, which I understand is it, it would not be uh, necessarily a viable approach, but you can add characteristic variability to it. And you can then use that and say, does it matter to egg mortality or not based on temperature? It may or may not, but this not knowing bothered our panel. We did reviews of, uh, and for those who know me, know I, uh, and you know Yetta, we both do life cycle modeling. So we reviewed these models uh, and it's all in there. Uh, there's other life history models that are coming, um, both Delta smelt and uh, salmon winter run spring run um i won't go into those here you can read them if 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 you want to uh i would urge though uh, and the panel was like okay you got overlapping models like two for delta smelt but there wasn't a plan of after you run both models how do you view multiple models generating similar predictions or different predictions when the models are not truly independent but they do reflect some differences. And so that, that needs to be looked at as a broader issue as well. Climate change, that's everyone applauding on the panel. I think that's five people. Yeah. Um, hydrodynamic modeling, uh, for those who want to look, DSM-2, we, we looked at schism is coming. Uh, honestly, those tend to be, the modeling itself it, it is pretty, it, it's always very good. It's how it's used that should be looked at uh, more closely. Um, here's an example. I'm going to show you three reviews, and then we'll wrap it up. <clears throat> Remember, there's 27 of these, right? So this is Old and Middle River. It's a negative binomial salvage model, and we uh, we this was uh, we reviewed this quite positively. It was thoughtful. It was well documented. Again, we we can't blame the draft too much. Uh, but it it seemed to be uh, well done. Um, and so they they have a, a model that has month in it. They have Sacramento River trawl catch per unit effort, which is the mean number they got per tow of a net, export, San Joaquin flow, et cetera. <clears throat> and you put that into a model and then you get from somewhere the... Uh, values you need for the flows, right? Export in this case, San Joaquin flows. Almost all of the time it comes from CalSim 3. And the y-axis now is predicted salvage. And the x-axis is a little odd because remember the only months were January, February, March, April, and December. So it's one, two, three, four, and 12. And here are your alternatives. And the different panels are different water years. So CalSim 80 something years of calcium bend into uh, wet, above normal, below normal, dry. Uh, I forget what C is, sorry about that. Uh, um, uh, and so, and then each bar is an alternative. So this is very, a standard presentation that was done in the effects analysis. Okay. Uh, it was well done. It, it, it had clever treatment of explanatory variables. They did a nice cross-validation. The plots were good. <clears throat> of course, we had, you know, um, it would be nice if this kind of presentation was carried over to other ones. Um, it was quite, quite positive. It got a thumbs up um, from us. Okay. This is now one of our more... Um, critically reviewed analysis. Again, the theme, Old and Middle River. 
It was called a volumetric influence analysis. You use calcium three monthly delta inflow. You sum the exports for the month. You do it December through June and you compute the percent of the inflow that was diverted by exports. And so now different graphs, but notice the alternatives are the different colors on the right-hand side. The, the bottom x-axis is the prediction percent of Delta inflow exported. And the different rows are combinations of water year types and alternatives. So same kind of information, right? Okay, uh, we're going from a good example in, in the salvage uh, analysis, we're flipping this to uh, an example where we were not as happy. We were quite concerned uh, the way this was, we couldn't tell if it's possible that the differences among the alternatives were uh, real or not. Uh, they might be, but we couldn't tell. Um, our review said calcium three is not the model to use that the Delta is poorly approximated as a continuously stirred mixed reactor. And on looking, thinking best available, there are other more suited models available. Um, and so we strongly suggested that this be revisited. Uh, and, and looked at again for the purpose it's being used for. So you got kind of the two bookends among the 27 there. Okay, the third and last review, again, the theme OMR. Uh, this is long fin smelt salvage. They used a previous re regression equation. Um, this is an example of kind of annual based correlations. The x-axis is old and middle river flow. The y-axis is, is a long fin smelt salvage. And they fit a regression line to this, or actually uh, he may be on the call. I think Lenny did. Um, and then used it with OMR flows coming out of uh, calcium to predict long fin smelt salvage by alternative and water year, okay? And then those are the months on, on each of those. Uh, are that the months? Uh, no, though, those are different alternatives, sorry, on the x-axis. Uh, and those are, again, those five panels. Oh, C means critical, thanks. Uh, there are five or six of these kind of annual correlation-based models. And so we, we gathered all our comments together here uh, and we, we're not, the panel is not big fans of these. Uh, there's a zooplankton outflow one. There's, uh, there's a, a sturgeon year class index and delta outflow one. Um, and you could imagine the reasons that we really don't know their predictive power. They, uh, it's notorious in fisheries. You, you relate uh, landings to a climate variable and then soon as you publish it, the next year doesn't fit. Um, very subject to influence points. You saw that with that example, um, with long fin smelt of almost two clusters of points. There's not much under mechanistic understanding and you, you can get spurious relationships. So we, we cautioned about the use of these kind of correlation, purely correlation on an annual scale for comparing alternatives. So those are just, and, and we went into more specificity for each of those models that use that. So those are just examples of the reviews. There were other positive ones as well. Uh, and there were many uh, that were pretty good. Uh, and here's some comments. Uh, I wanted to kind of show you the, the extremes. So in conclusion, uh, and now this is a statement from the, the I think they call them take home messages, take away messages. The panel anticipates that the approach uh, could or would, uh, we, we can't quite say would yet because we, we didn't see the whole thing, but could for sure provide a sound scientific basis for uh, assessing the alternatives on the species. Keep in mind, we had an incomplete draft, which uh, we thought was valuable, but it makes it hard to answer some of these broader questions. 
and assuming that reclamation will continue in their diligence of progressing with these analyses. Uh, a strong synthesis addition, and we did have, we had a lot of comments, but we had several key comments that uh, would be addressed. Um, not all, obviously, but several. So what are some, what were some examples of the important ones? Several of the models, and I gave you two, we didn't, we, we thought needed to be re-examined and, and re-looked re at. The sub-monthly variation just keeps coming up. Uh, the resolution that the alternatives seem to all give the same predicted effects. You, and you can go through our report and see uh, we, you know, which ones we, we thought were, what subset we thought were of particular importance. Most of the comments about the models, we considered the models other than what I've noted here and in the report, usable. And our review is about how well they represent the effects, especially those that are that would likely differ among alternatives. Remember, I talked to you about the calibration, what years were included, and how would that affect um, the fact they may be. And yet, as everyone knows in this call, uh, the Delta is not a stationary system. And so if you have stuff from the early 2000s and stuff from now, um, you have to be careful about calling all of that present day, right? And we had a lot about interpretation and reporting. We, using that common driver is good, but, but we have to deal with this variability, temporal variability. There's ways, relatively easy ways to get more consistency across the analyses, benching mark, benchmark to time periods, consistent reporting and all that. And uh, that those railroad tracks that just missed on the right is, is uh, you have no choice when you're trying to do this to have teams working on it. You just don't wanna get to the end and be close, but not quite. Uh, and, and it could have been uh, caught earlier and fixed. And hopefully our report can help reclamation that way. Um, so at least they're aware of it. Uh, and then the challenge is always integration of results. And I used four levels of integration. I don't know why, uh, but it's, 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 uh, it's hard on the brain to do this, but it can be done. And finally, um, uh, again, circling all the way back uh, about reclamation's effort. Uh, it was a major effort. Much was accomplished. We had many review comments a subset we consider critical, others are uh, advantageous to look at, uh, some are critical. And we have to thank the Delta Science Program staff, especially Aaron, uh, who somehow managed to put up with us uh, while we were doing this. And most of all, uh, the panel members, besides myself uh, that I introduced earlier, um, they really, uh, took a, a, on this challenge and, uh, you know, I, I, it's not many groups. I, I will sit there and we need something done and someone says, well, so-and-so can do that, but they have a lot of stuff, I'll do it. And so I, I really do want to acknowledge the, the team effort that involved uh, going through all these documents and putting together what we hope is a cohesive uh, review that is useful. And I think at that point, you're welcome to ask me questions. Hey, great. Well, thank you, Kenny, for your such a concise review of a comprehensive report. It's been very helpful, I think, for our committee and also for your other team members that are on this call. Uh, you know, th thanks so much for joining us today, but also contributing to this uh, r really a remarkable in-depth review. So what we'd like to do is perhaps just turn it over to committee members first, uh, if you have questions for Kenny uh, from what you've heard or from your reading the Delta Science Program report. And if you'd like to raise your hand, um, I should be able to see that. So we'll start off with Dr. Brent and then we'll go to Dr. Sullivan. Please. Hi, Kenny. Uh, thanks for a great review of that uh, that report. I'm wondering how deeply you dove to the next layer down. I know your focus was on the models, but did you 
get into the discussions of the data or monitoring programs that drive the models or did you get into any of the the science that either is being used to uh, test the models, validate the models, uh, 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 test assumptions or, or develop parameters for the models. As you know, you could have a perfect uh, an equation that perfectly describes nature, but it's useless if you don't have the appropriate data or if your assumptions are out of whack. So uh, how deeply did you get into the monitoring and science aspect of it? Yeah, so uh, the answer is uh, no and moderate. So no, we did not evaluate the monitoring uh, aspects of this. Um, uh, moderate, yes, uh, when each of our model reviews there, you, it's not like absolutely consistent, but you will find comments in there about the validation that was done um, and and whether, uh, for the most part, remember, most of these models have been around for a while, and they and uh, probably at least half of them have a fairly long history. So what I think would be more relevant, and we did some of this, was the new models or ones that when they used it for this analysis had to be modified or updated, were they reevaluated? So those are sprinkled throughout our 27 reviews. Um, uh, but we we were we started talking about the monitoring and realized we will never be done if we if we don't put up some sort of guardrail. So we did not make suggestions about monitoring, although several of the panel members wanted to. But that's a whole nother evaluation, right? Um, since the monitoring is also used for other purposes besides just the model. So, so it was kind of the answers to the two part were no and moderately. Yeah, because thinking about the science again, and uh, there's of course a lot of science being done on the Delta and all, and most of them relate to some form of a conceptual or actual model. And so, uh, and that work is continuing and ongoing. Did you dive into some of those ongoing science programs or, or, or th talk about what kind of, uh, boy, uh, if someone did science on this, this model would be dramatically improved. We did, but I, I will tell you, it, it, we didn't do it systematically. It, it was more that we knew about something or we asked about something and, and we mentioned it. So again, we, yeah, we, we did not broaden this to either the monitoring or the science enterprise that's going on. And, and that was one of our comments that some of the stuff being cited is progressively getting uh, older and there is newer stuff. And, and it, I think Reclamation used it. We were not in a position to try to evaluate that, uh, how that was being used. So, so it, not as much as we would have liked. I do think that's a, a great thing for a National Academy committee to look at because um, uh, you have the bandwidth in terms of per people with, you know, we're, we were all kind of, you know, ecologists or hydrodynamics people, right? You have, or I guess fish, uh, myself and the other, but you, you have a broader committee, I think, that can look at that. Uh, I think it's worth looking at for sure. Okay, thanks. Sure. Thanks, so Dr. Sullivan, and then we'll go across the top of my screen. We'll go to Dr. Fernando next. So but no, not too hard, Pat. Don't ask me too hard. <laughs> no, thanks, Kenny. I, I appreciate the overview, and it was good reading the report uh, as well. So um, the question I have, so this is a really a complex system, right? And uh, my question, because I think it's going to be important for us, uh, the Academy uh, review, is how to prioritize uh, what should be done. Um, so uh, some of these things, um, you know, it's it, it turns out to be obvious what needs to be done, but the question then is, do we actually really need to do that as opposed to doing something else, right? And there's a number of uh, models and situations and data where we could look at and go, well, I know what needs to be done there, but maybe it doesn't matter. So, um, so under this review, the review that you guys did with, was in preparation for uh, ESA, I guess, right? Uh, the question uh, is, um, would this help us? And so the way I'm interpreting it, and it's kind of naive, the naive perspective that I have here, is we have these different alternatives and you're 
you're kind of evaluating how the different alternatives look, right? But then do we have to bother with these alternatives or, or are there better alternatives or, or, uh, or, or should we be focusing on, on something else? And so I just would like to hear your, your view. Yeah. Again, we, you know, we put up guardrails. We, we accepted the alternatives as a given in, in, in our, in our smaller world of the effects analysis. Right. But we did raise a lot, uh, we raised multiple general questions about that, uh, particularly the pattern that they didn't seem to differ that much in mm -hmm. their effects. And that always, as, as a modeler, you always, you, if in the back of your mind, you go, did I miss something important mm -hmm. that, you know, alternative A has and B doesn't, but since it's not in the model, they both look similar. Um, or is there something going on, a common driver or something? Um, the prioritization is a very good question. Uh, I'm glad we weren't asked to do that. Um, as you know, uh, there's multiple factors that go in. And so we don't know a lot of things, but only a small subset's critical to know. And how you identify that, I, I, if, if it was me, I would talk to the people who are actually doing these analyses. And I think that's a good place to start. As you know, you know we, we've known each other for a long time modeling. Uh, there's an intuitive feeling you get about working with a model about what's important and, and what's not that often doesn't get documented. So, mm -hmm. so I, that, that would be one way I think to prioritize these. I bet you if you bring the, if the, if the bring the band back together, um, and the panel back together, we could, uh, this is risky, but I think we could put these into like, certainly two categories, low and high, but it's still a lot, uh, right? And we did some of that in the text, but it's not, it, it would be, you know, uh, color coded or something, right? You know, um, uh, but there were a few, and I think our most critical ones that I would say are high priority are the variability, the daily variability or hourly variability, and this the integration and but in really in particular also um, understanding why the alternatives look similar. Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be important and really looking closely at the relationships based on annual correlations. Well, see, my list is already growing. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. and, then, and then some of the use of CalSim, like the volumetric analysis. The, the, we had some strong statements about some of the analyses uh, didn't sit well with us. I would think that's a high priority, for example. But but it's a little different way to view it than you know the science part. It's it, We looked at that science and didn't like it, so that's a high priority. Um, uh, so th that's how I would I would look at it. I think that way. Um, those are always hard to prioritize, right? It's, it, but it's important, right? So, um, oh, we got good. more hands. Very good. Thanks, Kenny. Sure, Dr. Fernando, and then we'll go to Dr. Vidal. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much for very very insightful uh, presentation. Always as bothered that that the whole enterprise is revolving around calcium three and then all the downscaling associated with it. Yeah. Are there any effort going on to check this calcium three? Because it's it's a small, it's a very complex model. Um, it's kind of slowly evolving. And then you downscale it to DSM2, HEC 5, 5Q, and all those other models. How much for a given output, all these sub-models start deviating with each other? Uh, that's a good question. I, I don't know. Okay. Uh, uh, I yeah. think there are people who do, uh, but it's uh, again, it's you know, when Pat asked what's a high priority, it's it's the temporal resolution of the driving um, stuff coming in. Um, now, it um, and and I, and I will give uh, kudos to the Delta Science Program. The five people they put together, uh, one was an expert on calcium. Uh, one was an expert on, uh, um, I used the model. Uh, anyway, the, uh, the hydrodynamic models within the Delta. And so 
that that was very very helpful um but it's a fun that is a a, a question right uh, and just think about egg mortality as a function of temperature it eggs don't no, eggs don't do that for a month the reason i read this article in eos about the colorado river modeling the basin modeling yeah. and one of these is one of the questions is that when you come from the long-term average into sub variability within, there's a big divergence apparently. So that's the reason I asked that question because this might yeah. be very important. Well, I, I will say what I think, and this is fair to say, the panel did suggest that when possible, use calcium for boundary conditions on DSM-2 and, and those kind of models. That has a good potential. Um, oh, that's what it was, DSM-2. So that was the other model I was trying to think of. Uh, 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 it's not always possible to do that, but when possible, that was one of our, our comments. Uh, it, it It's a much better interpolator um, than than these other kind of, you know. And, and by the way, a lot of rates, a lot of organisms are affected by extremes and, and it gets even more, you know, complicated. But uh, no, I I I, uh, I I think what's missing is a strategy for how you you approach that problem. It, it's it's kind of uh, it's it's may not be obvious, but but there should be a strategy without having to change the models. I I think you can do what hydrologists do, and of course we have Peter, who's an hydrologist. We do have data that we can add variability to monthly values or whatever you're talking about right um and that i think is worth looking at and testing right um so so that was kind of an evasive answer to that, to that. <laughs> thank you thank you very much so certainly helpful <laughs> thanks so dr fidel and then dr reed hello thanks for the interesting presentation my question is on the assumption that the historical data that uh, is used in the models remains relevant to uh, to present day conditions. Uh, I think you mentioned that today, and it's also in the report, and it makes a lot of sense. But my question is, in your opinion, how big of a problem is that? Like, has this assumption been tested? Like, do we know, for example, if we change the the type or length of historical data in the models, how would our inferences change about these models, or? Yeah. Do you think that they are relatively robust to that? Oh, I, let me emphasize that I, I did say in the question and answer, I'm going to mix in my opinions. So this is yeah. an example of what. Be great. <laughs> uh, this is not, I'm not speaking for the panel now. Um, my, wait, so I, I know I'm familiar with most all of these models, uh, either having used them or reviewed them. Uh, um, and as you could imagine, some are, quite sensitive to the calibration of specific years and some are not. So I, I, I think you can, you can categorize them. I, I don't think the life cycle models that are already running multiple years are that is not, would not be my biggest concern. It's some of these statistically more statistical based models because um, and and I know certain committee members love the statistical models, but they're great if you stay within that domain of mm -hmm. the estimation data. And it's and then when you start getting out of it, it gets more and more uh, uh, you get a little more uh, uneasy, right? So so I would kind of view it that way if you wanted to to separate them out the the the. Uh, or the ones that are fit to time series, let's say, mm -hmm. right? Then um, uh, I think I think it's worth looking at, uh, and it may they may be robust. We we don't know, but it's it's worth taking a couple that are generating uh, predictions of across alternatives that are uh, turned out to be very influential in. When you synthesize things right uh to the species level or to um, population level uh look back and go okay uh you know i i i still it is what it is but if i had applied it to the second half of that series which is more recent would that would i have gotten 
I've calibrated it to. Would I have, how much did the parameter values change and would I have come up with anything different? And it may not, it may be robust, but but we don't know, or I don't know. Um, I shouldn't say the panel, so. But but I think, again, uh, you know, going back to the question about prioritization, prior, making, prioritizing, uh, uh, there are ways that, that uh, certainly our panel and others can pretty quickly pick out five that that we really think should be looked at kind of thing, right? Um, uh, and you can test it. And even if it does make a big difference, that really tells you about uncertainty, right? So um, so that would be important. Um, uh, uh, who, I forget who's calling. Uh, Peter, are you calling on people? Yeah. yeah okay. that's so we'll go to Dr. Reed and then to Dr. Ayla's after that. Did you ask that, Kenny, because you wanted to pass over me? <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, thanks, Peter. Um, I did just want to say that even if you didn't see differences in the alternatives in relation to the fish response, there could be differences in the alternatives for some other aspect of the system in terms of cost or water supply or something. Yeah. So, you know, alternatives aren't only formulated for what they do for fish. Um, and so I, I think I wanted to ask you, I'm struck by and a great job on the report. I think one of the things that really you did a great job on illuminating and reiterating the, the calcium issue with the monthly data. And so that was really, really nicely teed up. I think that was really good to see that very clearly come out. A, a kind of reflecting on your first charge question, which was about explain, right? Does it explain things? And so I initially wanted to ask you whether whether you felt they learned anything from this extensive analysis? Um, were there any new insights? There's an awful lot of modeling. You know, we should have learned something from it, particularly as we saw the effects of climate change play out. Maybe they, maybe they didn't look at the results that way. But I am a little bit struck by the large number of different approaches that were used um, and why they were all needed the way you did that brief description of the volumetric inflow outflow or whatever it was, it's like, what value does that provide to making a decision? And, and so did you get to the, to the heart of why they why they needed all of these models? I, I think I'm particularly trying to relate that to this idea of then using a weight of evidence approach, yeah. which may be quite sensitive to the models that you pick or the analysis that you choose to do to begin with. You know, some of the things that were in here, I was quite surprised. You know, I'm not a, obviously not a fish uh, biologist, but I can remember some arguments about some of these models from years ago about density dependence and, and things like that, That's uh, yet we're still using these when we've had those discussions for a long time. Anyway, so really I'm asking you about, about the suite of models and how they were selected and um, whether or not you feel like uh, a that kind of confounds the decision space and the weight of evidence a little bit because you've got too many things going on at once, too many answers. That's a very, very good question. Um, I, 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 and really, that should be asked of reclamation. Yeah, I know. I don't know. I should. <laughs> I was sure. asking you so they could think sure. about it and then answer <laughs> it at the next meeting. More than us. I, I will say, though, when we went through the documents, uh, and I didn't uh, convey it probably here to the extent, uh, th there, there is a logic to why they were doing that. And it and it went to question one about the conceptual models of delta smelt and salmon and showing different stressors affecting different life stages. My interpretation, because reclamation really made those decisions, but my interpretation when we looked at that was they were trying to get a, a, an analysis to capture as many as, uh, of the major effects that they could. Um, but I absolutely agree. The flip side of that is when you go to synthesize and integrate, right. it becomes uh, very complicated because they have, you know, it's very hard to assess the confidence in the different analysis. Right. 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 But, but I, I, the, the, I believe they will tell you, and I'm, I'm hoping they're on the call, uh, and and you might follow up with them. Uh, we we found that they're 
strategy appendix or whatever you want to call it was it seems very seems thoughtful to us um where i think it was it it could be viewed that it was uh, it was too much using though the models that existed as they existed perhaps and that also complicates things right 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 um, um but on the other hand it's best available it it's not develop a new model every time you need it so as you know we were we were working within that working on that landscape but we felt our answer to question 1 was that they considered you know many of the possible effects and then question two was, and they seem to quantify many of the major ones. Did they yeah, do it? Yeah, did they do it in a way that is, you know, intuitive and folding, and you can fold it up? That was where we got into more integration questions. Does that? Yeah. Question one was actually explained, not consider, and and so you know, which which implies to me kind of insight, and um, and so. Maybe that was just, I'm just over-interpreting their choice of, of charge question there uh, a little bit. It particularly, I, and I'll hand over the talking stick to somebody else, but, um, but you know, one of the things you were talking about just now in response to um, one of the previous questions was the idea of kind of robustness, right? And you can do robustness analysis across, across um, model results, but, you know, it needs to be, it needs to be structured and what you pick to compare in terms of robustness is important. And I think you pointed to that in your report about needing yeah. a really thoughtful and, and detail, you know, considered approach to doing the weight of evidence, right? Okay. Yep. Good. Thank you. So great points yep. that you made. Thank you. Sure. And so Dr. Ellis, and then we'll go to Dr. Lund. Uh Thanks, Kenny, so far. Fascinating presentation. I just uh, wanted to take this opportunity to remind everyone in the audience that if you have a question you would like to ask of Kenny, to write it in the Q&A. And I also wanted to just briefly suggest that if someone from the Bureau of Reclamation, perhaps Josh Israel or Dave Mooney, wanted an opportunity to respond to Denise's question just now about how the suite of models that showed up in the biological assessment and EIS were chosen, that um, you, <clears throat> you're welcome to do that. I think we would just need, if you do want to answer, we have to uh, just move you over to uh, the panelist side, which Maya could do relatively easy. Um, and if so, I just want to give, give you that option. So we don't have to hear your answer right now if you would like to answer, but just indicate to us um, in the Q&A if you would like to respond to that question of Denise's. And, and I do have other questions, but I'm going to let all the committee members go first. They, well, they, and also they can correct anything I said that's wrong as well, so. So Dr. Lund. Oh, great. Thank you, Kenny. This is a really wonderful presentation and, and summary of your report. Um, I, I was intrigued by, by some of the um, intermodel interaction kind of questions that, that you're talking about in the methodology. Um, I'm wondering if, if there's some room to do some uh, basically numerical experiments to see how you know results are Findings are, are dampened out or or uh, amplified through the, the cascade of models. Um, that that might be helpful in answering some of these questions and, and looking at the overall sensitivity and stability of these results. Absolutely. Um, and again, you know, reclamations on the call. It, getting done what they did was an amazing amount of effort, and it's it's a you know it's a uh, it's a question that I think it'd be a great research project to look at the propagation through coupled models. We don't we, we don't do that enough, not just here, but in other places as well, as you know. Um, it looks, you know, you, you draw these model A, model B, and you draw an arrow, and it seems very intuitive, right? And then we're doing it right now in another, in another, and boy, the details. 
you know, uh, how, how do you even follow, bring the variance along sometimes, right? It's so I, uh, I, I think that's a that that is fundamental, right, to this, right? Especially as you're moving across models of different time scales and spatial yep. scales, there's yep. a lot of potential for averaging. Yes. Um, Thank you very much. Oh, sure. Good to see you again. It's been a while. <laughs> well, thank you, Jay. And uh, Dr. Ellis, did you want to come back with your questions? Um, perhaps before you do that, I, I could just build on what Jay had said. Uh, Kenny, we had a very good session with the modelers and you highlighted the importance of perhaps getting a better handle on uncertainty and sensitivity. And I think certainly in the session we had, everybody agrees that needs to be done. But when you're looking at such a complex suite of models operating on different spatial and temporal scales, the traditional ways of mm -hmm. running uncertainty through models really don't apply. Or if they do, you end up with projections which are so enormous, they're really not useful. And I just wondered with your group whether, um, not necessarily in the report, but if you had any thoughts, the your I, I think what the modelers who are experts within the system were saying, yes, you can look at trajectories and it can be you can get a lot of insights from understanding uh, changes in trajectories. But but I just wondered if your group had had any additional thoughts on or, or advice on innovative ways for capturing that. Um, if, if we did, I don't remember, uh, um, we, no, I, 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 I would say, um, uh, that, um, we talked about it quite a bit, as you could imagine. Um, and it is a, uh, it is a challenge that permeates more and more of our analyses as we couple more and more models, uh, with big data, even, uh, same way you still have scale issues um uh we um the panel may may remember uh having those discussions but uh we were quite we were quite thrilled we identified it as a as an issue and, <laughs> uh, and um, we we declared success at that point yeah. um, but i will tell you that sir, the other members of the panel uh have a lot of experience with with these models as well as as i do uh, and it's it's ripe for looking at that. It it it's not it's not like you know it it has to be a ten year effort and uh, you put the right people together and this it it can be done. Um, uh, but but you can imagine we as a five member panel and by the way you know the way those review panels work is you're formed you issue your report and you disband. We're not a standing committee or anything. We we are done, uh, which is why I didn't want to ask them to have to present anything or anything. I figured I would take the brunt of it because of my past history with some of the people and stuff. So, and Laura, um, and of course, Peter was president of the university I'm, I'm still at. So, um, but there's the, the expertise is there, Peter. And so that sometimes, you know, you have a, a challenge and you, 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 you can't really put together the right group of people to to address it. I don't think that's a problem in the Delta for this kind of coupled model investigation, a propagation of uncertainty, presentation of results. The expertise is there. Uh, it, it's just not, it, uh, something has to, uh, gal you know, there has to be a, some way to put it together, right? Um, uh, and I don't say that, you know, on other places I'm on committees, sometimes you, you don't have, if the models are distributed, uh, uh, there's, you know, there's not that much interest in, you know, here, I, I think it's ripe for, for doing that. Th thanks for that insight. And, uh, let, let's see, uh, Dr. Ailish, should we go to you first and then we're uh, Yeah, let me, let me just. Jump in, and um, I'm asking Maya uh, if she can elevate Dave Mooney to a panelist because he offered to respond to 
Denise's uh, question, and I just wanted to reiterate that she had asked Kenny about the suite of models that were uh, part of their review and how that suite was determined. And, um, and I'm paraphrasing the fact that there were so many models, did that confound the decision space because there are a lot of things going on at once. So Maya, if you could let me know when we've got Dave Mooney moved over. He's on. Wonderful. Yeah. So forget what I said, and now Dave's going to give a right answer. Welcome, Dave. Thanks for being here. Thank you. I, don't, I think that um, I probably don't have a, a super satisfactory uh, short response that wouldn't detract from, from hearing the results of the review. We usually started with knowledge based papers, it's a broad survey from all of our communities, what the, the data sets out there, what the I'm having trouble. And and uh, actually, uh, Doctor, we're having a little difficulty with your audio. Um, I I'm not sure if you can either speak directly into the mic, and if that's, let's try again. Uh, how is this better? Much better. Much better. Yeah. <laughs> this is the uh, daily roll the dice on which microphone the computer picks. <laughs> so I, I think I'd say that you know when it comes to um, how we selected the models. Uh, it really started with knowledge-based papers. That was a broad survey of the, the community. I mean, the overall strategy of, of laying out the information probably deserves a, a longer, more thorough response. And so I think we probably should just get back to the committee on that. Right. I really appreciate the, the efforts of the, the panel and looking at what we had, reviewing the interim product. I, I think this is going great from my perspective. So while I have the floor, I'll say thank you. Uh, Kenny. Quite remarkable. And uh, perhaps we'll go to Dr. Booty first and then Dr. Sullivan, and then we'll come back to Dr. Ehlers. Pedro. Thank you very much for your uh, presentation. At the very, pretty close to the beginning, you said something like, and I'm paraphrasing, so forgive me, that you had a hard time sometimes discerning the difference of the effects of conservation actions versus long-term operations. And I was wondering if you could just talk a little bit more about that. Sure. And I will add, I'm, I'm on two other reviews and if I mix them up, it's I, I'm, it's my fault. Um, but, um, the, and, and pro probably it's partially that it was just so much information, uh, uh, which was well prepared and, and, and all that, but it's just a lot, right? Um, what we were st having some trouble with was um, uh, to simplify it. So there's a list, uh, the, there's alternatives and there's the operations that go with it and various other activities. And then there's conservation measures, which are, uh, are presented as a way to mitigate or, or adjust for those effects. And it, it, it could be our mistake, uh, but it seemed like there were times that some of the conservation measures were included in the effects analysis. And, and uh, again, the challenge of writing such a complicated document, it could be different groups, you know, and Dave, Dave would know, but as readers and probably readers who read it as about as closely as a lot of people will, we were confused. We would get together in a meeting and we would talk about the effects and someone would say, well, I thought that was included because look, it says here. And someone says, no, no, that that's, that's going to be a conservation measure. Uh, and it wasn't universal or anything, but it happened enough times that we wanted to raise that issue of clarifying our are some of the conservation measures? Uh, yeah. So thanks, Denise. Uh, oh yeah. So then the conservation, as Denise put in there, um, there's a proposed action, and there's all this ESA uh, language that's used that takes a little while to get used to, and and it confused us. Um, I'll also say that on these, and I, you, I'm sure as a committee you went through this that. Um, if, if you're not familiar with this stuff, you're drinking from a fire hose when you first show up, right? And you, 
you it's just you know how do people ever get this stuff straight well you will it, it'll happen it'll it'll happen so our our little panel was a mini version of that experience i think many of you had and then there's someone or a few people who know what all these things and you're just you know put them on speed dial right because uh it's it, yet you want to hear the explanation so that it was part of it too from our panel of of this it, the jar the, the language being used and it was hard to figure out very cleanly which where the separation between effects and some of the conservation measures would do uh I, i'll make up an example if there's a conservation measure that is trying to offset a temperature problem, but it's part of operations. It, is that in the effects or not? For and I made that up. That that's a hypothetical example. But you could see that's where. I'm, oh, you jumped over to the other side. Um, that you could see where that you, you can you know can get confusing, and that it, that's where we were having trouble. Uh, and why? Because the answer to one of the charge questions was, were, were all relevant effects considered? That it, it directly feeds into that. Okay. Is Pat allowed to ask another question? Uh, so, yeah, we go to Dr. Sullivan and then to Dr. Madey and Azua. So, <laughs> Pat. Great, thank you. Uh, yeah, sorry, Kenny. So this one, I think, is a little more sensitive. I'm sensitive to it. So if you want to dodge it, that's fine. Um, so this was really um, initiated from uh, the reinitiation of the Endangered Species Act, right? And, and attempts to address that. And of course, we're looking at all the models and everything else that try to characterize the system. And you just got through trying to look at effect or discuss effects versus conservation measures. What about stocking? So that's not mentioned at all in the report and obviously no, it, it's kind of playing a big role in everything that we're doing here. And um, do you have any comments on <laughs> that and how, how yeah. it plays into what we're doing? We, we made a few comments about, but it was really in the context of uh, the life cycle models distinguishing from hatchery and natural origin. We did not, again, our, our, our charge was not to evaluate the feasibility of different conservation measures. Uh, but but it uh, was our charge to say, is the does the draft effects analysis account for the differences? So yeah, I'm I'm gonna be weaselly uh, about that. Again, I think that's a very valuable topic, but it's probably um uh it was beyond our our scope um very good no thank you for that uh, yeah well i don't know thank me for not answering your question but it's a very good question uh but it's broad right it, it, yep. How, yep. how do we deal with the hatchery it's lots of effects yeah uh, all and, right yeah i do work in the columbia river and you know the percent of fish that go by that are natural versus hatchery is a big issue mm -hmm. right um um, great well thank you okay sure <laughs> well th thanks for that and i would just uh, refer the committee members too to the note that dave owen just put into the chat uh clarification thanks thanks for that david uh host way and then we'll go to uh dr ailers again and then to dr sen Thank you, Peter. Well, I wanted to echo uh, the comments from my uh, colleagues in that uh, this was a, a really uh, comprehensive uh, summary. And uh, thank you for guiding us through your uh, report. Uh, one thing that is stuck in my mind is uh, what you mentioned about the appropriateness of uh, some of the uh, models in estimating the effects given the uh, temporal uh, time scales. This has been uh, discussed already a little bit. But and um, and also uh, on the issues uh, that uh, that a lot of the issues that happen just because the models are used the way that they are uh, built, and uh, sometimes making modifications to them can be very uh, costly or can be a, a cumbersome task. So, uh, what are your your thoughts in the in the in building these uh, models in in the future or? Uh, 
adding some flexibility in in them. Ah, um, that's a good question. So, so you know, I and and again, I don't, I, I obviously don't speak for reclamation, but I I know the broader issue, um, and of course, uh, uh, people will know from stock assessment, changing models can be one of the most nerve wracking things you can do in some situations. So, so there is this uh, benefit of a familiarity that's developed with a model, but that's why we said, uh, that's fine, but make sure you're asking the model, you're asking the right, make sure you're checking the model that it's for the questions you're asking now, right? I, I do think there is room for a modular kind of approach where a, a common system can be used and have a mix and match different modules and people will, you know, and so, you know, there are food web models who do that, for example, and ROMS does that and, you know, various models. Uh, so I, I think that that there is room for that. Um, I don't think that's been the tradition in the Delta. Um, um, we we develop a familiarity and then we we uh, we nudge it and move it a bit as the questions change. Uh, and then I guess every once in a while, there's a seismic shift, right? So uh, this is my impression of it as a fisheries person, right? I think the hydrodynamics was like that. Uh, uh, um, uh, so. You know, schism is a is a sophisticated, potentially three D representation. Um, when I first started working out there, that that was kind of we weren't even really they weren't thinking about that, and now now they are. But I, I I'm not sure how you achieve that in a uh, in a software environment of of uh, of doing that, um, I, and maybe you know. People like Peter and stuff have, I think, thought a lot more about uh, the uh, open source generality of of doing these models. Um, uh, we, we did not as a panel, uh, um, uh, but I do think uh, you know, I, 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 that's that's probably the most I could say about it. Um, without starting to sound like a fisheries person talking about something uh, they don't know that much about. Uh, so that's probably a good time to stop at that. But but it is it, it's out there and and it it should be something maybe to aim for. Uh, okay, I'm gonna stop now. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, Laura. Thanks. Um Peter, so Kenny, I have two kind of questions um, that are related to what previous people have asked. Um, one has to do with the water temperature modeling platform, which our committee heard a lot about at its meeting three, mm -hmm. which Randy Fields and her colleagues at the Bureau have developed, I believe, to replace HEC-5Q for Shasta modeling. I'm assuming that that was not part of your review. Um, so uh, what I don't remember is, was it not part of our review because it wasn't ready yet, or is it not part of our review because it's not planned? That's what I, I don't, we did not review that. We reviewed uh, HEC-5Q. Okay, and this might not be a fair question, but um, you know, what about any of your conclusions might have changed had you been analyzing the water temperature modeling platform in addition to or instead of HEC-5Q? Um, and, and if you're not the right person to answer that question, who is, and, and, you know, we, we can set up a conversation with them about that. Yeah, I, uh, we, uh, I am definitely not, uh, um, and I, I'm not sure who, uh, who would be. So, so your question is essentially, uh, what happens, th there was a reason that it was determined worthwhile to, uh, go from heck. Heck five Q to another uh, uh, advance or another model, and you would have to ask them 
uh, I'm sure they thought long and hard about that. It's yeah, and we actually had a good presentation okay. on that. I just, um, yeah. I'm kind of trying to figure out like, you know, are we talking a couple of parts of your report might be out of date because HEC 5Q is no longer what's going to be used for, you know, hydrodynamics downstream of Shasta or, you know, do you think this is a major situation uh, I, that we might ask? No, you don't think it's okay. Yeah, I, I don't know, but I, I do know that HEC 5Q has a long history uh, of use in the system. Uh, I don't think it'll completely disappear, but I don't know. That would be something probably more for Dave or Reclamation about about that effort than for me. Okay, and then, but something more in your ballpark are the life cycle models for the fish. Yeah. And I know that there were two for Delta smelt that the panel reviewed, two for winter run, no life cycle models for some of the for other fish. Right. Um, and under the category of, you know, best available science i'm assuming that you know you were trying to find the best available model for example to answer um some of the questions about the alternatives that they were evaluating and yet we also know that you were presented with over six thousand pages of documents and a suite of models that the bureau yeah. um, chose to include in the effects analysis so i guess i'm wondering to what extent did your panel look outside the suite of models presented to you in the documents for other models, specifically life cycle models that could have been used but weren't? And did you evaluate them enough to decide that they were not the best available science and hence did not require further consideration or did it not get to that point because you were you you had a large amount of material that you had to review, so you stuck with what you were presented with? Yeah, so deconstructing that. Um, yes, it uh, it takes some deconstructing. Deconstructing that. Well, we we were quite content to review what was sent to us. We we had plenty to work with, so so we did not go looking. There are other models around, and there's a short section, and there may be more again, uh, that was provided to us uh, in the documentation of some of the life cycle models that Reclamation looked at and their reasons for. Uh, selecting them or not uh, was provided. But the, most of those reasons were more about availability, usability, uh, and Dave, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, rather than what they included, right? And I and in full disclosure, one of those models that were not included was mine for Delta Smelt, which is perfectly fine, but just keep that in mind. Uh, and there are reasons a variety of reasons for selecting the models. It was not provided in detail, but the impression we got was they they looked and had reasons. For example, uh, is it open source? Can you get the source code or not? And for people who do modeling, you know that we put a lot of value on actually looking at what it really is being calculated, if you might, might say. So there's various criteria that are used, uh, and I, I won't answer for a reclamation what criteria they did it some of it you can infer from their reasons they give in the in the documentation um the the models they picked um uh for the salmon were were uh vetted previously as in another process uh and uh our our, our the panel said you know they're okay but x y and z right um, the delta smell models are a little trickier to 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 view, and it's not because mine wasn't picked. Uh, it's because um, two models were selected, known as the shorthand is the Doriso Mondarin Doriso model and the Fish and Wildlife model, uh, both of which are kind of statistical rather than uh, the approach that the salmon used in the sense of more life cycle oriented. Um, yet there is, it gets very complicated. There is a, a, with Fish and Wildlife took my model and simplified it. And that is available and it, that's used for the uh, adaptive management group. But it probably, again, it, uh, it, selecting models is very important, but it's, it's not often uh, extensively documented. Um, uh, so, we felt that the models they picked uh, were reasonable decisions. 
for the questions that were being addressed. But it doesn't mean they're it's the best. That's a that's a different criteria. But they were. I shouldn't speak for the panel. I'm not sure we said this. I say that they're reasonable. So the committee members should not go looking in your report for an appendix or a discussion of every available oh, model that could no. cover the process is included in, like for one of the life cycle. Okay. That's right. yeah. I just want to make sure people understand that. Okay. Reclamation, I believe, did that. So, um, uh, um, yeah, I kind of got myself wound up in my in my answer because uh, it's it's complicated. Uh, uh, so I don't know. The, the safest answer to your question is no. Thanks, Kenny. <laughs> Whatever the question was, no. So yeah, that's yeah. Um, okay, well, that, thank you for that. And we're going to go to Dr. Sen next, but I just wanted to say we have about 15 minutes left. Um, if there are any of uh, Kenny's panel that uh, wishes to embellish on anything that's been said, please put a note in the Q&A. Uh, and also, before we open it up to, to other participants, uh, if Dr. Mooney Reclamation have anything to add to the Delta Science Program, or if Dr. Grimaldo is still with us, if there's anything you'd like to add to this conversation on anything that's been discussed, uh, you please do so after Dr. Sen. And if you could just indicate that uh, through the Q&A. So with that, uh, Dr. Sen. Thanks, Kenny, for the great overview. Um, I, this is a quick, in the interest of time, I guess this is a quick question. Well, maybe more of a clarification, but you mentioned early on that as a way of defining the group's charge, your review focused on the approach and not necessarily the results. Um, and and you know, that seems essential given everything that you had on your plate. And yet the regions of that result space where the outcome might shift from one interpretation versus another or one decision versus another is exactly some of the places where you'd want to spend your most time kicking the tires probably. And so I was wondering if you had... like. How did you navigate that in terms, you know, staying focused on the approach, but yeah. cognizant of the results? And like, would you say that it's fair to say that the interpretations or the, the your review is relevant across the result space, uh, if, you, if you follow my question? No, that's a very good question, because we, we had to kind of uh, check on each other, because you, you do slide into that, right? Uh, and for example, one of our comments was uh, the alternatives seem to be all behaving similarly when it comes to magnitude of effect. Well, doesn't that just violate what I said earlier? That, but but what where we tried to draw the line was deciding whether those effects were significant or not, or large or not. So, but it it it's tricky, uh, and and but we also had to because it we didn't have all the results and sometimes we we had results without any interpretation which, which is okay with us but then we can't that's still part of methods to some extent right so that distinction between uh reviewing the methods without well and reviewing the results is not a a sharp it's not a clear wall but we, it, when one of us would, I think, wander a little too far into the results, somebody would pull us back um, and we would rephrase our comment or, or something. So, but it is, it is tricky. On the other hand, I applaud Reclamation for sending something that wasn't done yet because uh, it, it enables uh, hopefully a reaction to our review rather than it, the review being the last step, right? So, you, you know, and you have to do this trade-off, right? Um, the, for us, reviewing it would have been easy if everything was complete, and, right? Uh, but but it was worthwhile, I think, um, uh, to do that. Um, so it's hard. It, it, it's hard to not look at, look at the magnitude of the results and say, wait a minute, isn't that part of methods? The interpretation would be, and we did spend a lot of time on presentation of the results, but without trying to comment on that, oh, you, you should present it this way because they're highly significant, right? Which, we, you know what I mean? It's hard uh, uh, to do. So we tried to navigate that. Um, uh, 
which is probably why we went through so many iterations of the draft, right? Great, thanks a lot. Sure. Good, well, thanks, Jenny. And I'd like to just draw folks' attention. Uh, Rachel, thanks for pointing out the Delta Science review of the water temperature modeling platform. And uh, the committee does have copies of that report. Thanks very much. But for those other participants, if you're not aware um, you, that um, temperature platform was reviewed as part of Reclamation's really comprehensive review strategy. You know, we've heard from Dr. Rose, there was the you know, that review, and of course, bringing in the National Academies as well for this very rigorous review of all aspects of the science. So with that, uh, Laura, do we see any I, I, I just wanted to ask uh, Dave Mooney if he could share the Bureau's thoughts on, um, I believe, how they're working the water temperature modeling platform review into the larger uh, reconsultation process. I think that is perhaps what he had hoped to do. If not, and I'm totally wrong, um, let me know. But I think um, we can probably talk more about the, the water temperature modeling platform. Uh, Laura, if it's appropriate, I could share a little bit about, you know, how we're taking the input we got from the review panel and the next steps. Please think, do, uh, please do, yeah. So, uh, again, we're just really appreciative for the panel. Um, peer review and that kind of check and um, kind of constant strive to improve our analysis is something we want to just work into our way of doing business. Uh, for these, uh, we've been working through the comments. Uh, as part of our, our NEPA efforts and the environmental impact statement. Uh, we also will be posting uh, how what we've done with the comments and how we've incorporated it to Reclamation's peer review site. Uh, some of those responses will show up in our public draft EIS, which I'm uh, constantly checking email now to see if we have clearance to uh, post and release in a week. Um, I think some of it we won't be able to get to until the final EIS. And then kind of the remaining comments we'll be sharing and working through with the agencies and various interested parties as part of our, our planning and adaptive management as we continue to operate the projects. So, but every, every comment will get a response. And that's part of our commitment is to figure out how do we close the loop when we do get these, this feedback. Thank you. Excellent, thank you. Uh, and Laura, I'm not seeing any comments on my end? Am I missing anything? Do we have any requests from either the Kenny's panel to add or any other comments from agencies? Oh, and I don't, I, don't, I don't see any other uh, specific questions. Uh, Lisa Marie, I didn't know if you wanted to be uh, elevated um, to just make a, maybe a final comment on this particular effects analysis review. But otherwise, I don't see anything, Peter. That's great. Let's just give Lisa Marie a moment in case she would like or Henry would like to respond. We'd need to move her over, Maya. I'll move her over. That while well, we're just waiting to see if uh, the science program will have anything to add. Um, you, Dave, did you have any final comments from Reclamation's perspective? Nope, that was supposed to be my closer of uh, how we're uh, addressing comments and the thank you. Okay, okay that's great. Thanks, we do have Lisa Marie now. Okay, great. Thank you so much for, for the opportunity to, to listen in on this and um, I, I did make a small comment in the Q&A just to highlight how wonderful it was to hear Dr. Kenny Rose um, summarize his results enough to enable this discussion, because that's what's really what this is about. And so, um, again, the transparency of this, it's all on the Delta Science Program website. I hope, I hope everybody can go in and look at the charge, the background documents, the review documents. Um, it was a really exceptional panel and um, the Delta Science Program staff, especially Aaron Angel, 
um, but also Alex Stella and, and Rachel Klopfenstein um, really played a role in making sure that this um, came out to be such a useful document. So I just want to say thank you again, uh, Dr. Goodwin, Dr. Ellers, for having this, this session. It's It was wonderful to see it elevated at this level. Great. Well, thank you, Lisa Marie. That was uh, great. And so seeing no other comments at this point, I'll... Uh, did you have any closing comments, Laura? If not, I'll do a quick thank you to Kenny. Uh, nothing other than to remind people that we do have an upcoming fourth meeting of the committee, August 12th to 14th in Davis. And the open sessions will be mainly on Monday, August 12th. We hope to see many of you there. Right, thank you. And Kenny, we'd just like to thank you on behalf of the committee. And I think uniformly across the committee, uh, that was really a remarkable review for the panel for just five of you to go through that amount of material, synthesize it in the way you did. Um, you know, and for it to be so balanced and helpful, it's probably saved our group a huge amount of time. So thanks for being willing to come out <laughs> um, you know, before our group and for also putting all the time in the prep. And I know you've worked very closely with the National Academy staff. Um, to determine what would be useful in the presentation. Yeah, so I'll just add many, it, yeah, many thanks. I, I want to acknowledge the rest of the panel members too. They, you know, this was me, I'm the spokesmodel, but uh, it was truly a group effort um, to, to do that. So, okay. Uh, but, but it was an extraordinary review and the way the document was structured at the end. I know a science program always do these things exceptionally well, but it, it, it was, very, very well done, as, as was the presentation today. Thanks. So with that, uh, we'll close this meeting. We hope to see folks in August. And uh, have a good weekend, everyone.